but I am going to be recording so that we can share it on our YouTube channel. So once again, welcome to our Texas Children and Nature Dream Week presentation. Uh, and so we are going to be presenting tonight about who we are at Texas Children and Nature Network and also uh, why kids spending out time, time outdoors is so important. And then lastly, a, a good number of our partners from the San Antonio region are going to be presenting as well. My name is Sarah Coles. I am the Executive Director of Texas Children and Nature, and I would love it if my fellow uh, presenters would like to introduce themselves. Theo, why don't you go ahead first and tell everyone who you are and what organization you're with. I'm Thea Platt, and professionally, I am the Outdoor Education Director for Northeast Independent School District, and I'm also the Regional Leader for the San Antonio area, and also serve on the State Board of Texas Children in Nature. Thank you, Thea. Uh, Kara, would you like to go next? Um, sure. My name is Kara Garza, and I'm with Picture. I'm with the Green Spaces Alliance and the Picture World Youth Photography Program. Thank you, Janine. Hi everyone, my name is Janine Garcia. I am with the San Antonio River Authority. Helen. Good evening, I'm Helen Holdsworth. I'm the Chief of Engagement at the Witte Museum. And then Patty. Hi, I'm Patty Reyes. I work for East Central, um, primarily connected to service learning with students on public lands. And then our tech help tonight is provided by April Conkey. Um, and she is also one of our state board members. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start our presentation. So at Texas Children in Nature, our mission is to ensure equitable access and connection to nature for all children in Texas. And we do this for a few reasons. Um, first of our big reason that why kids need to spend time outdoors is kids who learn and play outside are healthier, happier, and smarter. So they're ha healthier physically and mentally. Um, they do better in school. They have better self-esteem and uh, good self-discipline. They um, are good problem solvers, are more cooperative with others, are more creative. They feel connected to nature and they become our future conservation leaders. And we see this through lots of research that happens. Um, we see lots of research telling us that kids who, are, who spend time outdoors are healthier physically and mentally. And one of those the big research that we've seen lately has been coming out specifically about green exercise. So that's the idea that when we exercise outdoors, it's actually twice as good for us as exercising in a gym. And so you not only get that physical activity that's good, especially for kids, we're seeing a higher increase in obesity and prediabetes. So that exercise is really good for them that way, but also it's good for your heart and for, um, you get the vitamin D from the sunshine, and so it's really important. And then mentally, our bodies are designed for us to spend time outdoors. Um, and mentally, it helps our serotonin levels, it helps with our, um, our sleep cycles, because getting that um, sun helps us then regulate our bodies that way as well. Um, and so it's really important for kids to spend time outside. Um, and so also we're seeing a lot of research come out that kids, particularly kids during the school day who spend time outdoors um, are able to pay attention more during the school day. They even as much as little as a five minute break where kids walk outside and spend a little time in nature and then go back into the classroom is influences their attention span when they are in the classroom so much more. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of great research coming out about that. And Keely referred to this right at the very beginning when she joined and she and I were having a little chit chat with the higher self-esteem. We've got a great um, webinar up on our YouTube channel, which I'll link to when um, I send out a follow-up email with the YouTube link for today's re re recording. Um, that just their self-esteem and their decision-making abilities when they're outdoors 
um, by spending that time outside is increased so much more. And so we really think it's important for kids to spend time outside. Um, Thea, do you have anything you want to add at this point? I don't want to take up a whole lot of the, the time, so I'm just going to keep it very brief. Uh, welcome to the conversation. We're really glad that you're joining us. And I think one of the things that I've noticed in my many, many years of working with kids and taking them outside is just the heartbreaking knowledge that they're not even aware of that there are public spaces that they can go to. Um, for little to no cost. Um, and so I think part of, of our mission is to not only help them to understand and the parents to understand how vitally important it is, but to help them make connections with the places close to home and to better educate them about city parks, um, state parks, all parks, but especially those little areas that they have close to home that they can take advantage of. And that way when we get to do that deeper learning and enrichment on environmental areas. They're already familiar with at least being outside. They don't have that have as much of the fear factor of just not even knowing what it is to have the leaves fall on them and being scared by that, which I've had happen with some of the kids that I've worked with. Um, so the smallest little things that we just wouldn't think about can be barriers and getting them into their comfort zone to really getting the full benefit of being outside. So I think it's really important in this particular venue of, of equity and inclusion that we remember to really look for those little special places in all areas of towns so that we can help people to connect with them and know that they are there for them and for them to use and that they should be doing that and have the spontaneous opportunities for when crazy mom needs to go out um let's just you know go go to the park and you don't have to make it be a big event every time and then you can look forward to the big events because you have that little wedding of your appetite with those little pocket parts so then you're really excited to go to the zoo or the museum or have a major event because you're a little bit more comfortable in doing that so thank you for being here glad to have you Thank you so much, Thea. So because we believe that kids who spend time outside are healthier, happier, and smarter, at TCIN, we envision a Texas that te te we envision that Texas children and their families from all walks of life will spend more time outdoors engaging with nature for a healthier, happier, and smarter Texas. So some of the history of our organization in 2009, uh, State Bill 2205 uh, resolved that to address the problem of nature deficit disorder through the creation of a working group between Texas Parks and Wildlife and the Texas Education Association. So out of this group, a, a group of leaders, uh, including uh, Thea, who's on this call, um, from across the state uh, joined together to talk about what we could do and TCIN was formed. Um, and since then, TCIN has been part of TPWD. That is until this last week um, where we became our own 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. So in uh, 2010, TCIN released its first strategic plan and we just finished our 2021 plan. And through that, we have eight strategic areas of interest, education, health, community, access, equity, leadership, marketing and policy. And through that, we work in each of those areas. And today we're gonna to be talking a lot about education with a lot of our um, leaders that are on the call today. So that is working with teachers and with um, informal educators who are teachers at museums, um, aquariums, uh, nature centers. Uh, we work with uh, those professionals to talk about how kids spend time outside during their day. Uh, we've worked with health professionals for making health a public health strategy, um, making nature a public health strategy. So just like I talked about at the beginning that going outdoors makes us healthier and we want to spread that message. Working with community groups, so groups like the Boys and Girls Clubs, YMCA, church groups, we work with all different kinds of community groups across the state. Access, as Theo was saying, how can we access nature and, and who is able to access nature. We work a lot about that. And that's where that equity comes in as well. Is all of the nature welcoming? And we really wanna address that. 
we know that right now, not all nature is welcoming to everyone. And so we're really trying to address those issues as well. Leadership, so how we are addressing this problem across the state by creating youth leaders that are working at this across the state as well. In San Antonio, you've got the Mayor's Council, Youth Council on, cult, on uh, Climate Change, and that's a great example of the work that our partners are doing. Marketing is events just like this to talk about what uh, spending time in nature is. And then policy, how can we make changes at a statewide level? So we have quite a few projects. Uh, the first is Nature Rock San Antonio. This is a great website that is available to everyone in San Antonio. It's free for you to use. And it shows where green spaces and activities that are going on across the state, your city, that you can participate in. And I will send that link out as well. Ole Texas is a statewide initiative to integrate outdoor learning environments and early childcare centers. And one of our pilot sites is at the San Antonio Zoo. In fact, that's right where that picture is taken. Um, also, San Antonio is part of the Cities Connecting Children to Nature initiative, and this is an initiative that's putting nature in the forefront of everything your city does. And so you guys are really on the forefront of, of what's going on in nature in, te in Texas regarding nature. We have a social media toolkit. This is a partnership where we are sharing with schools how they can share with their students. How to, do, how to interact with nature with their families. Working with schools for green schoolyards, how can we create more access to nature on your school campus by creating park-like settings for our students to interact with every day? And lastly, our stories project. We're collecting stories from people all over the state on how they connect with nature, especially now during COVID, when Early, early on during COVID, one of the only things that was available to people was being able to go outside for a walk or go outside to their local park. So right now I'm gonna turn it over to Patty at East Central ISD. Welcome um, and thank you for having me be a part of this. So um, most of the things that we are building into our program as a school district, um, we got most of these ideas from being involved with um, Connecting Children and Nature, the Texas Connecting Children and Nature. And um, we started in uh, 2014 and then a little bit over time, uh, instead of just calling our program service learning, we shifted to park place. And I put the place in italics because we discovered um, very early on how important interacting with a specific place versus just looking at something in a textbook in your classroom, how much that can add um, to the student's context for even being able to be excited about or to understand the content in the classroom. And it also um, gives them a way to be a part of something bigger than themselves that can lead to all kinds of career exploration and um, just following their, their uh, passions and developing their skills and talents and competencies. Um, when we came up with the name, we looked at uh, the Monopoly Board because the two most valuable places on the Monopoly Board are Boardwalk and Park Place. And um, Park Place then kind of makes um, a big connection for us as a district to public lands because it is one of the, we are discovering it is one of the most important things that we're um, giving our students. And I do wanna say um, that in the beginning when we started out, uh, there was not as much support as there is now in the district because they viewed uh, going to a park as getting out of school, disrupting the school day. And um, field trips, uh, we, we don't even call them field trips anymore, we call them quests because we had to change our language in order to get full support from administration and teachers so that now our district views uh, this learning can take place anytime, any place, and in many formats. And so as a result of that, um, we've really shifted as an organization. We um, have uh, you know, recently developed Twitter at Hornets World and our Instagram is Worldwide Hornets because the idea is if we can um, kind of curate the future generation of stewards and help them discover themselves, uh, then, you know, really sky's the limit. They can go anywhere and um, give back. 
This um, little post um, to the right up at the top is uh, Jacob Bicknell. And we had a Texas Parks and Wildlife grant. We had to amend our grant because of COVID. We didn't get our last 10 bikes. And uh, we actually borrowed um, quite a bit of information and ideas and inspiration from Kara that you're gonna hear about later. And um, did checked out cameras, uh, did backyard photography and had our students do what we've been training them to do, speak for themselves, develop their own voice. Um, he identifies himself, uh, what his graduation plan is, how he first got involved in the outdoors and why it matters to him. And so um, giving the students the opportunity to practice that allows them to become advocates for, for the outdoors, but also for anything, their organization or anything in their future. Our students designed our little logo down here on the bottom, um, which is a hornet. And, you know, he's got a camera and he's got a recyclable, reusable water bottle. So he's not throwing plastic away all the time. A little compass and, of course, a T-shirt that's green because we want to be green outdoors, leave no trace. And it says Park Place on it. And our students get one of those when they participate in our programming. Next. So um, what we are focused on, in addition to all the things that have already been mentioned, um, are our endorsement graduation plans, because we're a school and we're accountable for that and we care about that, and also service, um, because again, we're looking at stewardship and um, students learn by doing and we're trying to create roles for them in their interaction with the outdoors that's related to their endorsement plans. So we have been moving from the classroom to outdoors to an awareness of public lands and then eventually into service learning. So in the left, um, you see students that are memorizing. We were invited by Big Bend National Park. Um, they had heard about us. Um, we had visited there before and done some small service projects and they had the grand opening of the fossil discovery exhibit. No idea how many people were going to show up, no idea what age groups. And they asked us if we, they knew what our mission was with the endorsement plans would be, we, we be willing to come out and as a service project, help them um, at this grand opening event. So when we arrived after seven and a half hours, you see our students, um, they met the chief education ranger there. Um, and she said, she was also, of course, the media person because they have two to three jobs um, at a park. But she said the signs, the way signs on the path had not arrived. And tomorrow was going to be the big grand opening. Lots of school kids were going to be coming in. Would our teacher prep students be willing to memorize each uh, the information on a sign and stand there like a human sign along the path as they greeted all of the people coming in? And it was really one of our most spectacular events. You will see our health career students in the center um, during Veterans Day weekend at a park giving blood pressure um, checkups. We have a high rate, like 94, 97% passing rate for our students in health careers. Um, these are students that aren't even 18 and they pass the state exam and um, they're eligible to work in, in uh, entry-level medical po uh, positions. And the last photograph, um, one of our other uh, great examples is they are dibbling, they are planting 20,000 small longleaf needle pine trees in a reforestation effort in East Texas, um, Big Thicket Preserve and at Martin Dice Junior State Park. Um, this is just a sample. So students sign up for a role. They can work on the culinary team. They can work um, in media arts, photography, documentarians. They can work under teacher prep, law enforcement. We have a role for anybody's endorsement plan. We'll create a role for them in camp-based life. And we uh, do that training in the fall and the spring and then several day trips during the year. So uh, we are... Um, trying to increase knowledge about public lands with a specific focus on Texas. And like Thea suggested earlier, we do focus on all parks, national, state, and especially local. We do find with our students that if we can take the leaders outside of um, the city 
and go to a national park or a state park, uh, usually there's no cell phone service, so they're totally unplugged. They can't um, tap into mom and dad for uh, the very first couple trips we took, no one had been camping. <laughs> and now that's changing, um, now that we've been around since 2014. But it's important for students to um, go someplace to discover themselves different, look at themselves differently in their community differently when they come back. Then they're prepared, they're more confident, and they're prepared to give back locally, which is which is very important to our district. We do follow the four pillars from the Department of the Interior for youth engagement on public lands, and they're simple, play, learn, serve, work. So we combine all four into all of our events and agendas because it's the uh, research-based and it allows a student to be more likely as an adult to have a lifetime commitment to public lands. That's important to us. Parks, um, state and national, are often one-stop shops for career exploration. So it's easy for our students to see themselves in the people um, that they interact with at the park. And we have now made it uh, part of our community-based accountability system under the topic of civic engagement. So uh, these are some of the recreation areas that we um, support, that we promote, kayaking, outdoor cooking, camping, hiking, biking, nature photography, archery, environmental education, and of course, service. Um, so you see some examples. Um, we are trying to get students to activate their voice their personal authentic voice. So um, one of the early activities is to have them develop their own hashtag signs. Um, when they get their pre-briefing before we go, they decide what they wanna focus on. You see the little girl and she's got hashtag see America. 52% uh, of our students have been involved in curricular and co-curricular activities, but 48% are not involved in anything. And part of that is because the time commitment for a sport or choir or some of the student organizations is um, nearly every day after school and some of them do not have the ability to, to, for a variety of reasons to make that commitment. So it's very important for us to build in a way to give those opportunities, even if it's only for a day or if it's for three nights and four days, to give them the opportunity to be connected to something big like public lands. And you see these girls, how happy and excited they are, first time kayaking. Um, and and uh, they didn't know each other before the trip. So it's really nice to um, see that kind of a connection. That last picture, um, those girls, um, we had some support from REI and we didn't know it until later, but th they featured these students on their hike at Boquillas Canyon in Big Bend National Park in their internal journal. Um, for, you know, the importance of getting young people out on public lands. Uh, we have, since we started with the secondary students and endorsement plans, expanded our programming. Um, the, the photograph of the cake, um, one um, blue ribbon went on to state at Skills USA contest. And you'll see that her cake was inspired by her visit to Big Bend National Park and all those crystals um, that she put um, from rock formations um, was one of those unique cakes that the judges had just never seen before. This is a student um, whose background normally, um, this is a case definitely where she was able to build context, um, knowing how to make a cake, knowing how to make um, these this creation with the icing. But uh, you know, the boost from the outdoors inspired her in a way that made her project unique. We have our little third graders that are now per, uh, participating in outdoor labs at San Antonio Botanical Gardens and Mitchell Lake Audubon Center. And you can see their little citizen science notebooks and how excited this one is to have a bird feather. She actually caught two and wanted to share it with her buddy that she was walking with. We are volunteering at Sandy Oaks Olive Orchard. Um, they are repotting um, leaves, checking root systems to see if it's ready to go into the next size larger pot. And up in the top corner, a little button that says, thank you for your service, EC. So our district is now recognizing the importance of um, stewardship. 
And that's it for me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Patty. Um, so again, my name is Janine Garcia. I'm the Education and Engagement Coordinator with the San Antonio River Authority. Um, we are a government organization. Uh, we were uh, established in 1937, and our mission is to keep the San Antonio River and its tributaries safe, clean, and enjoyable. Um, so we manage uh, and maintain over 500 acres of parks and more than 45 miles of, of paddling trails um, in our four counties, which are Bear, Wilson, Carnes, and Goliad. And so on the next slide, um, I'll be talking to you guys about some river recreation. So we were really excited to see that in 2020, um, visitation to our parks uh, increased greatly by over 100%. So it was really nice to see people getting outside and into nature, um, despite everything that was going on and still is going on. Um, so here I have a couple of maps that you can find uh, on our website website, which is sariverauthority.org. Um, if you go onto our website and navigate to our parks and trails page, uh, you can look at all of our parks, look at all of our paddling trails, and click in to each one just to see more information. Um, so today I'm just going to highlight a few of our parks due to time, but there are so many more to see, so definitely check out the website and get out into our beautiful parks. Um, on the next slide, I'm just going to talk about three of our parks. Uh, so these are my three favorites. It was really hard to choose, um, but I'll start with the Museum Reach on the left. Um, it's an urban park on the San Antonio River Walk that winds by public art installations, the Witte Museum, the San Antonio Museum of Art, and the Pearl. Uh, this picture shows my favorite art installation. It's called Fish by Donald Lipsky, um, and it's these, these big, big models of long-eared sunfish that light up at night, and it's just a great way to highlight one of our native species in the river. And over on the top right is our Mission Reach. This is an awesome place to go hiking, um, ride your bike, walk your dog. You can even go paddling, so you can uh, rent a kayak or canoe. Um, we don't rent them, but there are lots of organizations uh, nearby that do. And this was actually home to our ecosystem restoration. And so we conducted an avian study out here just to see what kinds of birds were, were using the area. And um, we documented over 200 species of birds that were using this restored ecosystem. So definitely um, take your kids and your family outside, grab some binoculars and get to bird watching on the Mission Reach. It's a great opportunity. And um, together with uh, the San Antonio River Foundation, which is our nonprofit arm, we have a beautiful, beautiful park called Confluence Park. Um, this is an award-winning park with tons of low-impact development features that catch, collect, and then use the rainwater that falls on the property. So it's a great place to get outside, but it's also a really awesome opportunity to get educated on some low-impact development features. Uh, so the next slide, I'm going to talk to you about some of the recreation opportunities that we provide. And um, we have free recreation programming. This is open and available to everybody. Uh, we loan out angling gear from Texas Parks and Wildlife. We also loan out kayaks, camping gear, archery equipment, all of this for free. Um, we partner with local community organizations like UT Health, Black Outside, Girls Inc., The Bloom Project, and the Fanatic Angler Foundation. Foundation, which is really awesome. They will come out to our parks, of course, not in COVID times, but we hope to establish or keep going with this relationship once we're out of the pandemic. Um, but this Fanatic Angler Foundation comes out to our parks and they do these family fishing programs that are amazing. There are about 10 to 12 comprehensive stations. So you can go to this program not ever having fished before and learn a bunch of information and just how to fish. Um, great for the whole family, really, really popular program. Um, our Watershed Parks and Operations Department, in combination with the San Antonio River Foundation, um, are currently developing activity kits. And so this is going to be a bag full of recreation materials. So we've got a frisbee in there for our disc golf that goes on at a few of our parks, some jump ropes, flashlights, trail guides, um, binoculars, all kinds of things. Um, these are going to be free and available to be checked out. And we plan to carry this on forever. So beyond COVID times, we want people to just get out and engage with our, with our parks. Um, so these will be ready very soon. So 
I'll keep you posted. And we're also working on a virtual activity hub that is going to feature opportunities with um, for the public to engage with the River Authority from home. And this is still in the works, but stay tuned. Very exciting. Um, on our next slide, we'll talk a little bit about education. So we offer in the education department, K through 12 and college groups, we're able to do field trips. Um, and then when we're not able to do field trips, such as right now, we do um, virtual classroom presentations, which you can see me conducting one on the right. Um, lots of great opportunities to either get kids out into nature and down to the river or to bring nature to students and show them things that they may not have understood is, is here in San Antonio and lives in or along the San Antonio River. So we have lots of good education going on at our parks as well as in classrooms virtually. And then the last slide that I'm going to talk about today is our River Warrior Volunteer Program. This is a really great volunteer program that we have at the River Authority. Um, you need to be 15 or older to officially sign up with us, but we do have like mother-daughter duos who sign up together and family groups who come out together. Um, we do all kinds of amazing things like water quality testing through Texas Stream team. Uh, we remove invasive species and plant native species. We do a seasonal bio blitz and litter pickups. Um, so right now we're doing our virtual education programming for our volunteers where we kind of bring volunteers up to speed on a new initiative and then they can go out and do a volunteer um, activity independently so they're not having to worry about being around a bunch of people but it still gets people outside together with their families gets them down to the river and um, on the last slide I just have my contact information for y'all so please feel free to email or call if you have any questions um, do visit our website sariverauthority.org for more information on our parks and trails and follow us on social media at San Antonio River thanks y'all Thanks, Janine. Next, we have Helen at the Whitty Museum. All right, thank you. Uh, Sarah, thank you for putting this together. It's nice to see some uh, familiar faces we haven't seen in a while. So hello, everybody. Um, uh, next slide, please. So when we, um, oh, I forgot about this slide. Uh, so the Whitty Museum has been around since 1926. We started as a natural history museum. We went through a major renovation um, back and uh, opened, uh, reopened in 2017. Um, but we've always had um, this theme of nature, science, and culture, um, where now we look at the lens of Texas through Texas deep time, meaning we look at it vertically, starting with millions of years ago with our dinosaurs that roamed in what we now call Texas, to thousands of years ago. Uh, the people who lived in the Pecos um, to hundreds of years ago for our legendary Texas history to today, um, which is where we focus our uh, Texas Wild and our land stewardship programs. Next slide, please. Um, so we've, we've had environmental science and natural history programs uh, since uh, the beginning. Um, of course, we we're, uh, provide um, really focusing on native Texas wildlife. We have immersive gallery experiences. We have students come on field trips, um, not right now, but uh, in, in, re in regular day, in the good old days, um, <clears throat> which we'll have again eventually. Um, and um, thousands of students come to the Witty every year. And we, we have thousands that participate in our programs. Um, we really focus on how they can be a land steward, how students can be a land steward and encourage them to go out and do things, whether it's at their school or their church or their community park, um, but we can all contribute to land stewardship no matter where we live or how old we are. Um, and of course, we always like to um, show them up close native Texas wildlife, um, not to be afraid of snakes and spiders and scorpions and those types of things to have a healthy respect for, for our native wildlife. Um, next slide, please. Um, so when we uh, were hit with this pandemic um, and shut down, we of course wanted to continue to um, reach out to um, the community. And so we came up with the Witty Where You Are videos, which are on our website free. Most of them are three to five minutes. 
and we have everything from making pine de dulce to bird watching. Um, but we we knew that you know people were going to be going outside. That was going to be their only outlet, whether it was just going to their backyard or going to their city park. And so we did incorporate some of those outdoor education type videos. Um, so that you know, we could give them a little uh, advice um, on how to how to best take advantage of those opportunities. Um, next slide, please. And then when we, you know, when the school year came back around, and um, and and we knew that the the schools could not come to us, we pivoted to the to the distance learning, which or, many organizations have been doing distance learning for for a long time. Where I used to work. Um, we did it for, for years. Um, so this was new to the witty uh, and new to our team. But um, I think we really came up with a, with a great product. We focus on uh, being live with the, uh, with the students and they can link through Zoom. So whether they're learning at home or in the classroom, we can all be together. Um, and then we, all, we provide some unique programs that other people um, uh, don't have the resources for, such as uh, talking about the people of the Pecos. And uh, the Witte also actually owns property out in, in West Texas, the White Shaman Preserve. And so we encourage folks to, to learn about these, uh, re these natural resources um, and then go out and explore them. Exploring Texas uh, is, a, is a big thing that we talk about as well. So whether they're going to a state park or going to White Shaman Preserve with us, um, so we've got the uh, uh, rock art programs, and if you'll go to the next slide, you'll see we also do uh, we do the the Texas Wild programs. We also do some health and wellness and some STEM programming. We talk about Texas rocks, um, but the message throughout is that students can learn about these things, but the best experience is to go outside and, and explore. Uh, their community, their environment, just right around where they are. They don't have to go far, uh, although there's some cool places that are that are far, like Big Bend. Um, but we really just want them to explore and be um, aware of the opportunities that are out there. Next slide, please. Um, and then these are just a couple of our other programs. Um, we also have a very extensive art collection, um, so we can talk about nature and art. Um, <clears throat> with our with our curators, um, and then our gallery theater programs, uh, where we have uh, actors that that present programs to talk about the different environmental things. We don't have uh, we don't have very many environmental programs in this one. Texas history is kind of the big one, and and that. But we're getting there. We're we're developing new programs every day, and we're getting ready to. Um, be part of the Connect to Texas Consortium, which is a statewide effort to expand our program offerings uh, to different schools across the state instead of just locally, which we are right now. Um, next slide, please. Kind of our biggest land stewardship program is the Land Stewardship Ambassadors Program. This is a partnership with the East Foundation. And uh, we started the this will be our third year. Uh, we actually start next month and it's a competitive application process. We're looking for students who are interested in learning about land stewardship, um, exploring career options in conservation and natural resources and be, um, be advocates for uh, stewardship. And um, we focus primarily on private land stewardship uh, because Texas is 95% privately owned, um, it's important that people understand the benefits of private land stewardship. And so we partner with the East Foundation, which is a, um, a, a nonprofit uh, that was formed from a family that was one of the biggest landowners in Texas. And they own over 200,000 acres of land down in, down in South Texas. Um, and we have two cohorts of 15 students each. Um, this year, we're gonna have three cohorts. One will be here in San Antonio, one in Laredo, and then one in, the, in Brownsville, based out of Brownsville. And the students will go through the same curriculum over a 10 session uh, period 
um, talking about history of conservation, economics, public benefits of private land stewardship, advocacy, water, wildlife management. Uh, they'll come here to the Witty for one weekend uh, all together to do some team building, um, learn about Aldo Leopold and the tools for wildlife management for, for land stewardship. And then the last weekend, uh, we will take them to uh, one of the ranches owned by the East Foundation, uh, which the East Foundation is a, is a cattle operation. They do research on um, how cattle affect the landscape um, and so, uh, and they interact with the wildlife. And so they will see how land is managed, how that land is managed. Um, while learning about all the different ways that land is managed in Texas. We do talk about public lands, we talk about conservation easements, all those different things. Um, government agencies like San Antonio River Authority, um, we take them down to Confluence Park. So we try and expose them to as many different um, agencies and organizations as possible. Uh, we spend a lot of time talking about careers. These are high school students, freshmen to senior. Um, so we want them to be aware of those opportunities. And part of the program is that they have to give a presentation about a topic related to land stewardship and present it to a group of their peers. Now, the first year that worked great. Um, last year, we, we, of course, we did ended up doing half the program through Zoom. And so they did their presentations on Zoom. But we actually recruited some professionals in conservation and natural resources to watch the the presentation. So um, that was there was kind of a benefit to that in that those professionals got to see these kids and the kids got to interact. Um, so it's been a great program. Uh, we're excited for our third year to expand um, to, to up to 45 students. We, you know, are hoping that eventually this will be a statewide program. Um, and uh, if anybody's interested in learning more about it, um, Patty, I wish we'd met three or four months ago because I would have targeted your, some of your students probably with, for this program. But next year, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Um, but if anybody has any uh, uh, questions about that, let me know. And the next slide. Oh, look. That's my favorite raccoon. One program I forgot to put in here. Shame on me. Um, we're starting an adult program called Walking with the Witty. And we are going to walk the entire... San Antonio River from the witty to the end, wherever it ends, I don't know, but not at once. Uh, we're gonna do it uh, a little bit at a time, one to two miles, uh, one, one Saturday a month. Um, and we're gonna bring together nature, science and culture in those talks um, as, we, as we walk down the beautiful uh, river walk that Sarah has put together for us. So thank y'all again for, for being here and thank you for including me. Thank you, Helen. And we'll do questions after our, I think our next one, Kara, you should, I believe you are our last presentation. Oh. So Kara, if you want to go ahead and go. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was lucky enough to participate in Dream Week uh, last year. So it was, it's really nice to be included again uh, for this panel presentation. Um, so uh, my name is Kara Garza and I'm with Green Spaces Alliance and uh, the Picture World Youth Photography Program. Uh, but before I get too much into the Picture World Program, for me to really, for you to understand what Picture World is, I kind of need to explain what Green Spaces is. So uh, Green Spaces Alliance is, um, we are a land trust, we're an urban land trust, and uh, we directly serve the, the citizens of San Antonio and Bexar County. And uh, we do this, we, we do this through conservation work. We uh, preserve open land uh, over uh, the Edwards Aquifer and uh, uh, preserve uh, working farms and ranches uh, for food production and uh, natural resource preservation. Um, so in addition to our land program, we have two uh, public programs uh, that directly engage the citizens. And so that those are, uh, through our urban land and waters program, we have a community gardens program and um, a network of community gardens. And right now we have 22 active community gardens in our network. Uh, we provide education and resources 
to uh, help make those gardens sustainable and to uh, provide some existing gardens. Um, and then in addition to that, we have my program. And uh, Picture World is a youth program, it's a youth-centered program. It's for ages eight to 18. And um, it is a nature photography program. So it's all about getting kids outdoors and engaging in the natural world through the camera lens. It's just basic, basically what it is. Um, and so if you look on this, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty visual, so I mostly have used pictures to show, but you will see you've got some kids that are playing around in nature. Um, we do not just throw uh, cameras to these kids. Uh, we do loan cameras to them, um, and we teach them how to use the camera um, to get them out there, or they can bring their own to a workshop. So next slide, please. Next slide, okay. Um, so the purpose of Picture World is we have basically three goals. Uh, one is to show the community youth beautiful surroundings right around them and to get them outdoors. So uh, one of the things that I love so much about this program is uh, I host my workshops at different natural areas all around the city. Uh, so I could be at the Witty, maybe, or I could be at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. I could be at Confluence Park. I could be on the Mission Reach. Um, I've been at uh, Government Canyon. Every, just all of them. I've been to Cibolo Nature Center. So we, we host these workshops once a month and they're always at different natural areas. Um, we teach students new skills by providing expertise with seasoned photographers and professional naturalists at outdoor workshops. So. Um, I am a photographer. I bring an, another photographer with me, um, and uh, the two of us, we, uh, we will start a workshop with some sort of lesson on photography. I have a general lesson just on uh, elements of art and design and how to uh, just basically how to make sense of nature and how to, um, how to strategies for approaching the natural world and photography. Um, and so we have we have that and then we assign cameras and then we go out and we hike and we photograph uh, for probably about an hour and a half to two hours, depending. And um, we have a master naturalist with us who's uh, putting context into what the kids are photographing. Um, and really the purpose of this program, the main purpose of this program is to build the next generation of environmental stewards. So I think all of our uh, programs have kind of talked about that that fostering the next generation of environmental stewards is really critical. And it's really part of what TCIN is all about. Um, okay, uh, and so these are just pictures from our workshops and um, you can see us all out there on the trail. Um, so how do we do this? How do we outreach the public or how do I outreach the youth? Um, there's actually three um, primarily primary components to that. Um, we have a, what I, what we call our weekend workshop program, um, that usually runs from September to June. So it kind of follows the school calendar. We take July and August off because it is just really too hot in, in South Texas to get these kids outdoors, but, um, it runs pretty much like a school year. Um, and it's for ages eight to 18. Um. Those are, those are my workshops. They're usually held on Sundays. Um, right now they're being held from two to four at Bulverde Oaks Nature Preserve. Um, and I want, I'll come back and talk to you, but actually Bulverde Oaks is a, some property that Green Spaces owns and manages. It's in Northeast San Antonio. It's on the corner of Judson Road and 1604. Um, it's about 31 acres, and over the years, we've uh, added two miles of trails, we've added a, an outdoor classroom, and uh, we now have a bathroom facility out there. And so, um, it, so now we can actually bring the public to Bulverde Oaks, um, and we can host some education programming there. Um, it, is a, it is a preserve that's been adopted by the Alamo Area Master Naturalists, so they are doing a lot of the work on, and the restoration work on the trails. Um, we also have Boy Scout groups come out there and do their Eagle Scout projects. We've had all kinds of uh, work being done we, uh, out there lately. So we're really trying to, to grow uh, Bulverde Oaks and make it a lot more accessible to the public um, for the future. Um, so, but right now, you know, since COVID, we've, um, we, we've been using it a lot more. We do host um, 
Saturday morning hikes, um, first Saturday of the month. Uh, those are led by uh, uh, Matt Fisher, who is our land conservation and stewardship director. Uh, we host those um, every Saturday, once a month, the first Saturday of the month, and they run from about 9 a.m. to noon. Um, so right now, my, my weekend workshops are being held there. They're being held every other Sunday from two to four. And um, right now, of course, the, the size is limited to 10 kids or less. Um, obviously, before COVID, I had a lot more kids at that were able to attend workshops. Um, the other um, part of my programming is I have a Title I elementary school program. This is for fifth grade students, primarily fifth grade, sometimes sixth grade um, students um, at uh, Title I, at five Title I schools. And right now I'm working primarily in the San Antonio ISD, although I'm hoping to expand that um, and work with some other uh, schools um, as, we, as we grow the program. Um, but the way that works is usually um, I will have these fifth graders, they will be um, bused to me by teacher classroom um, to a natural area or park, um, and they'll be given a lesson on photography and composition, and uh, they'll all be assigned a camera, and they'll have an opportunity to go out and photograph that park. Um, they'll come back, and they'll give their turn their cameras in, and we will... Um, Pick some, pick some cameras randomly and uh, uh, show, uh, show some of the work that they've done. So we get, we get a chance to kind of give them feedback and positive reinforcement about what they've gone out and photographed. Um, when um, I get these cameras back, I do return all the images to the teacher. So the kids always get their photos back. Um, we do not keep their photos. Um, so the five schools I'm working with right now are Franklin Elementary, uh, Bonham uh, Academy, uh, Advanced Learning Academy, Lamar, and I think, I think that's it. I think I hit all of them. But anyway, okay, so those are the schools I'm working with, mostly fifth grade students. Um, these kids, these same kids come to me uh, twice a year. They come to me in the fall at one particular location, and then they'll come to me in the spring in a different location. So for instance, um, one year our workshops may be at Government Canyon in the fall, and then in the spring they may be at, say, the Witte Museum, or they'll be at Botanical Garden. So they get a chance to see nature in two different um, settings, in two different kind of elements. They get, they get a, a broader experience of what nature is. Um, and then finally, we uh, every year we host something uh, a citywide nature photography exhibition. This is uh, this is open call. It is a juried competition. Um, we award uh, prizes and um, and honors in two age groups. So that's eight to twelve and thirteen to eighteen. Um, you do not, you know, kids do not have had to have had former experience with picture world to participate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So this is this this allows us to extend our net. You know, we can open it up to um, to other kids in other schools and try to get them, you know, get them involved in that whole dialogue of getting out and photographing nature and having them be a part of it. Um, the photos are, the winning photos are showcased locally. Um, and we usually have some sort of large reception, some sort of wonderful way to announce these awards and, um, and showcase all the work that these kids have done. Um, I will say that this, because it happened in the spring, um, because of COVID, this really, um, this really, we had to really pivot that exhibition last spring. And so um, we were able to do it. We just did it as an online exhibition and it worked out great. And, was, what was really wonderful is um, our friends at the Tobin Center for Performing Arts came and said, came up and said, well, we will exhibit your photos. And so they exhibited them digitally. The winning photos were exhibited. There's 30 winning photos and they were exhibited on their outdoor screen. Um, it's a large outdoor screen. And they did that for the whole month of June. And through that, um, through that process, it caught the attention of Centro San Antonio. And that is a, a downtown organization, a downtown nonprofit that is about 
promoting local businesses and promoting the arts downtown and getting people engaged with downtown. And um, through this, we were asked to be a part of the Art Everywhere initiative. And if you look down at that bottom slide, um, 25 of the picture world photos from past exhibitions were selected to be part of this public art exhibition. So uh, they are now on the, um, on the windows of the Frost Bank Tower, which is a new, obviously the new bank tower. They're on the, I think it's the Cameron Street side that faces um, the, uh, the new uh, San Pedro Creek extension. So that's kind of a wonderful dialogue that we have going on right now with San Antonio River Authority. I think that's really nice. So these photos are there um, and uh, it's really exciting because as you can probably see, they're, they're really big. I mean, they took these photos and, and blew them up like five and a half feet by 10 and a half feet. So it, it really is, uh, it's really impactful and it, it, it really shows why nature matters to us. Um, I think one of the, one of the goals for this, um, having the students and one reason why Picture World may have been selected, it, it's a huge honor for us, but um, it's, it's just a great way to have, it's a great way to show resilience. I mean, we're all getting out in nature so much more, we need it so much more, and it's sending that very important message out there to the public uh, that we all do better, both um, physically and mentally when we spend time in nature. And that is particularly true for children. And I love that this message is being sent by young people because conservation, all these things, it matters to us now, but it's gonna matter to them. They, they now have a seat at the table and, I, and it just is really wonderful to me. And um, a huge honor, like I said, for this program. Um, we will be doing the, the exhibition, of course, again this year. Um, probably, I don't know how that's gonna work out, but I, I'm sure that with our stakeholders and friends, we will, we will try to make it as big and successful as we can. Um, I am, you know, still, like I said, still doing programming. It is in person, but it is very limited, you know. Um, and I have done some virtual uh, workshops with the elementary um, schools. Uh, how that's working is it's actually really good. I'm, I'm able to uh, do a Zoom lesson on photography and I have given the teacher the cameras. And so the teacher is now responsible for um, getting the cameras to the kids, but they are just going outside and photographing the grounds of their school. Then they're giving the kid, you know, the teacher gets the cameras back. She gives them to me. I download the images and I give them to her so they can be used in the classroom. So that is one of the wonderful things about the program is that it is a very flexible program. It can be used for lots of different things. And, and um, I will say that most of the kids, what I, what I love about teaching these kids and what I love about doing um, nature photography, uh, particularly for young people, is that they don't, they don't really come into a workshop with a set agenda. Um, they, they're just looking to have fun and to get out and to photograph. And they are so open to that experience. And just being open to the experience is, and having fun is as it should be. And then as they're photographing and, and getting in, seeing nature through the lens, they are really getting close to it, really engaging. And, and then they start finding all the things that are wonderful and special about the natural world. So um, I do not have my contact information. I didn't put a slide up on that, but I tell you, oh, we do have it. Okay, so anyway, so that's all I have. Um, but if anybody has any questions, please um, email me. I will say that we are doing, I'm, I'm open to doing small groups, hosting small groups. Um, if you have a small group you wanna to put together and you'd like to have a Picture World workshop, just reach out to me and uh, we, can, we can do something at Bull Verde Oaks. Um, that's fine. Um, I'm happy to work on that. So anyway, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We've got a, a couple minutes left if anyone wants to um, ask any questions. I think we've got a small enough group that if you guys just want to take yourselves off mute, um, we can do it that way. Sarah, I've got one for Patty. Okay. So Patty, uh, really cool program to hear about that. Um, 
and how much of your activities are actually extracurricular and how much is done in the classroom and what is your secret for getting the school district to go along with it? Um, well, um, I have worked for the school district for more than 32 years, so that helps. <laughs> And I was an administrator, a teacher, and um, now I'm working with all of them. So again, that personal relationship with some of the leaders helps. Um, that being said, um, using the mission of the organization, um, studying it, helping to even draft and polish it up, um, leaves room. So, you know, it used to be our motto, and it still is up there, every student, every moment, every day meaning they're trying to maximize instruction. And um, so every student, every moment, every day could be any day, seven days a week. It could be Monday through Friday. It, it's really the idea of maximizing um, learning opportunities. And so um, when they did come up with the virtual, having to go virtual, you know, uh, superintendent's message is that you're, we're gonna offer quality virtual um, education um, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we spent a lot of time on our slide decks, Google Classroom, all of that. But those words, um, we believe learning can happen anytime, any place, and in many formats, meaning during the school day or for some students because of access to internet and their parents are working from home, so they're booted off. Um, you know, the parent is earning the money to pay the bills, so the student will get the virtual learning at nighttime, maybe at 11 o'clock. But that concept of any time, any place, and in many formats, then is broad enough to apply to what we're doing. And we just have to be firm and hold everybody that I, I buy into what you're saying and we can even expand it. And then having great partners, um, you know, like this organization, um, you heard all of the wonderful ideas everybody's got and all their programming. And so you just start to network, network. And if I could network with every single person that's a member, I would, but I have to get to know them slowly because it takes time to develop that relationship and then bring it into your school. Um, so that's what I would say to you, pick really good people that are gonna help you execute it, that there's something in it for them. You're not asking to do one more thing, you're helping them reach their kids in a meaningful way. And what I've discovered from a lot of our partners is that um, a lot of nonprofit organizations that are environmentally based want students. They want access to students. And those of us that are in schools have the students and we want access to experts in the outdoors. And so if you can form those relationships, it's a great, it's a great way to move forward. I hope that helps. Well, we have come to the end of our time tonight. So thank you everyone who attended. Thank you everyone who presented. All of this information has been fantastic. Um, Y'all are doing some wonderful work in San Antonio and really helping get our kids outside um, in, in a wonderful, wonderful way. Um, so thank you so much everyone and everyone have a fantastic evening.